Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, um, I am not Shannon. Many of you figured that out already. Unfortunately, Shannon was going to MC tonight, and she is ill, so... Um, Y'all gave me a bronze statue with two empty buckets, so I guess I better get to it. Um, first of all, thank you, Amy Fairchild, for the beautiful piano music. That was just stunning. One of our, one of our uh, newest board members to the Willow Valley Music Alliance, of which I am the executive director, for those of you who don't know me. So um, uh, tonight, we celebrate women, words, and music. In uh, Willow Valley Music Alliance, Fish Trap, and Josephi Center for Arts and Culture uh, are joining forces for this event. And um, it's always a pleasure to, um, to work with other nonprofits, especially of the caliber of, well, which hat am I wearing at this moment? <laughs> <laughs> the other two, <laughs> or all of us. <laughs> I need another bucket, exactly. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Get on that, would you, Rod, if you're out there watching. Um, anyway, oh, I have a note here. Uh, please uh, control your cell phones, turn your ringers off before we start, please. Um, uh, anyway, thank you for uh, coming out tonight. Um, I want to thank our sponsors right away, Seroptimist, um, for, for the grant, and um, Terminal Gravity for providing the um, liquid refreshments. And... Uh, our crew here at Fish Trap, Shannon, who put effort into this but can't be here tonight, um, Mike, Jennifer, Hunter, and our newest uh, Jessica, um, thank you all for um, doing your more than your parts here tonight. Um, Jessica is our <laughs> uh, Jessica Bogart is our replacement for Hunter, who is leaving. To answer your question, yes. <laughs> thank you, Zani. Any more questions? No. <laughs> Anyway, and, uh, and hello to everyone out there in internet land. We are streaming this live on our Facebook uh, page, so. Um, okay, um, we have, uh, we're gonna start off the evening with the words portion. So we have three readers for you tonight. Um, and then we're gonna take a quick little break and change the, set, uh, the stage a little bit and do the music portion. So um, first up, we have Amy Zam. And I'm going to uh, introduce uh, her, if I can read my notes here. I forgot, to bring my, forgot my glasses. Uh, Amy Zam lives at the foot of Mount Joseph and spends her time in the mountains, valleys, and canyons, once stewarded by the Nemipu people. In addition to writing, she works as an acupuncturist, a yoga therapist, uh, oh, and a yoga therapist. <laughs> Her writing focuses on the connections between place, history, and discovery of self, and the ways in which a perfectly ordinary life might provide some sort of insight into the magical world we each inhabit. Her work has been published online at Atticus Review, Streetlight, Manifestation, and Jenny, and in print at The Normal School, uh, Post Road, and Oregon East. She received her MFA in creative writing from the Eastern Oregon University and holds a doctorate of acupuncture and oriental medicine from the Oregon College of Oriental Medicine. So please welcome Amy Zam. Thanks, Janice. Wow, I haven't been in a room full of people for a really long time. <clears throat> and I apologize, my, I have a little bit of cold. My voice is kind of rough tonight. Um, so I have, gosh, I haven't read publicly for a long time either. So when Janice asked me, I thought maybe I ought to dip my toe back in the water. Um, the piece I chose for this evening is one I wrote a little while ago. It was published in uh, Oregon East, which is the... <laughs> Journal as a journal published at um, Eastern Oregon University, um, and just I guess I should disclose that I've changed some of the names in this piece just for privacy's sake. Um, it's called "A Favor for a Friend." Roger's mother died, and he wants me to read at the memorial service. He and his partner Nick both want me to stand at the microphone and read the words they've written to remember her. They can't do it. It's too much. Too much pressure, too much emotion. 
They want a woman, a strong woman like Barbara, a spiritual woman like Barbara, a witchy woman like Barbara. I don't know how to tell them that I'm not much like Barbara, <laughs> except maybe that last part. <laughs> I'd do just about anything for Roger, and I didn't know Barbara that well, so my grief is reserved for him. I've been deep in my meditation practice lately and am feeling grounded and open. How hard could it be? I've known Roger since kindergarten. In grade school, we pass notes back and forth, not love notes or gossip notes, but narrative notes. The ongoing story of Festus and Fanny, two fleas who lived on the back of Roger's dog, and their ongoing adventures. Dialogue, scenes, myth, scribbled between blue lines on white paper, folded into tiny tight squares, secreted across aisles from palm to palm. Cold radiates up from the cement floor of the community center. Empty chairs make neat rows facing the large pull-down screen. Roger's cousins are seated up front with microphones and guitars, practicing harmony on the songs they will sing. I find Nick first. He offers a long hug, a whispered thank you, the first of a hundred. Roger appears behind me and wraps me in the embrace I love. With my ear against his chest, I hear his heart racing, absorb the sob he chokes back, feel tears burn the corner of my eyes. I step back and look down at the folded papers in my hands, shaking now. How hard could it be? Too hard. I stand against the wall and watch friends and family filter through the door, signing the guest book, shaking hands, wiping tears, hugging. When Glenn walks in, I turn away in hopes he won't see me, but he does. He swaggers over and reaches out to shake my hand. I clench my jaw in a tight smile. When he leans too close, I smell the bourbon on his breath and step back. He attempts to assert some charm. I hold my breath. With each sentence, I inch further down the wall until he gets the hint and moves on. So much for grounded and open. I think about being present and kind, or at least respectful. I think I just failed. Across the room, Glenn leans into someone else. I watch the slideshow, pictures of Barbara with parents and brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and grandchildren. Barbara laughing, Barbara reflecting, Barbara living. My heart hammers against my rib cage. My diaphragm presses up and forces breath into the top of my lungs. Sweat from my palms stains the wrinkled paper in my hands. Roger's letter, Nick's poem. How hard can it be? I speak well in public, but when I step to the podium, my voice trembles. I put my glasses on, smooth the paper, take a deep breath, and I hear it. I hear the deep, resonant tones of her voice in my head. And before I know it, I am saying unplanned words about today's new moon and darkness and planting and fruition and new life and cycles and beginnings. And when I start to read, my voice is not my own. I stand apart to listen and watch as my friend's words move through me their grief, their memories, their love. My eyes are dry, my hands are still, my heart is open because this moment has nothing, nothing at all to do with me. Roger speaks of how much he will miss her, of the way she showed kindness, of her seeking through prayer, Buddhism, indigenous practices, astrology, extraterrestrial influences, seeking answers to the unanswerable questions. Barbara believed in karma. Nick names her sons and her grandchildren and all the pieces of her they carry in their lives. Other friends stand to speak and remember, and I hear the same words again and again. Compassionate, kind, selfless, stubborn. I am not much like Barbara, except maybe that last part. And maybe the seeking, Barbara whispers, and the karma. The crowd pushes toward the buffet tables. I move against the current, eyes down, heading to find my coat. As I reach the open space in front of the door, I collide with another shoulder, Glenn. <laughs> he smiles, his eyes red from tears and maker's mark. I remember his presence at my father's memorial. 
I remember my absence at his father's memorial. When he opens his arms and steps forward, I step back, a small step this time. Instead of turning away, I extend my hand. He takes it, shaking his head. She was really cool, he says. She was, I agree. Barbara was really cool. I'm not much like Barbara. As I zip my coat and step into the January cold, the late afternoon sun warms my back. I stop for a moment, close my eyes, and turn my face forward toward the heat, the residue of tears sticky on my cheeks. I think about Roger and Barbara. I think about my mother's springtime funeral 15 years ago. I think about new moons and dark nights, planting and fruition, endings and beginnings, and all the things that Barbara showed me today. Thank you. saving those for you. <laughs> so one thing I forgot to mention earlier, um, I decided to put the collage um, in a frame and put it up for silent auction, the collage that is the artwork for this um, poster, um, in case anyone would like to buy it. <laughs> it's over there on the table. Um, and, uh, you know, winning bidder takes it home. So at the intermission, feel free to go over and have a look. Um, okay, um, Zani, you're up next. <laughs> um, if anyone, uh, ha how many of you have seen the art exhibit at Josephi, the women's exhibit right now? Okay, several of you haven't been there, you need to go. If only for Zani's self-portrait, <laughs> which was my favorite piece. What's that? <laughs> Well, yeah, but you're, 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 everyone was just like gushing over your picture on opening night. Anyway, Zani works at the post office and the Range Rider. Um, but writing and making art are the only things staving off her full-blown midlife crisis. Please welcome Zani Schaffler. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is the first time I've gotten to read um, not to a computer screen in a really long time. So that's very cool. Um, thanks, Josephi Center, uh, Music Alliance, Fish Trap, all the places that help stave off that midlife crisis I was talking about. Um, and thanks, all of you, for coming. This, um, this little clutch of poems does have a few bits of language. It has two F words and one A word. <laughs> um, and these are, this is sort of a project I'm doing. Um, I'm sending postcard poems to people. So I guess this would be an epist, the, these first three poems are epistolary poems. Dear Cohen, my friends go around the planet, not with Coke executive frequency, but plenty and oftener than 99% of the world's population. There are academic schedules and the kinds of jobs with beer refrigerators and 1980s video games. Video games are so fucking boring. I tried once. Devin went to Copenhagen for two months, and I had to look up which country. I remembered mermaid, not Denmark. When I asked what he did there, he said, in his words, went to a couple of libraries, rented a bike to ride around, read Kierkegaard again. My friends paged through that kind of density, where I read a single sentence eight times, toss it away for poems, that only and always demand that half brain in this world and half in some other place that doesn't exist in physical space. You could say it's the world in the space between the lines. 
but only an asshole would say that. So don't. With intense love, Zani. <laughs> Dear Annie, the name of my book shall be No One Has Enough Time to Talk to Me Enough. It will be called that because the statement is true. Hemingway said, write one true sentence. And for a time, I had that taped to my compact presario on a piece of yellow legal paper. Crumbs and hairs forced their way under the tape. And sometime later, I took it down. I've never written one true sentence. Maybe an honest one, but never true. The professor I admire most said that Hemingway and Carver ruined literature for a half a century, and I tend to agree with her. She said they blocked out any room for the messy, the vaginal. So that is what I am here doing now, writing you this messy, vaginal, clean card. <laughs> Some doctors say the vagina cleans itself. It's magic that way. Just look at a floral O'Keefe and you'll know. <laughs> Those guys, everyone else had to clean up the messes they left behind, especially in the end. Okay. So this is the last epistle. And um, when I got my first Moderna uh, COVID vaccine, um, I started calling it my Dolly shot because um, some of the money that Dolly Parton contributed to the research ended up with Moderna. And um, so my friend Mary B and I both started calling our vaccines our Dollies. And so we are now both triple Dollied, um, <laughs> is what we say. Um, the last line of this poem is a quotation from a song by Dolly Parton on the first Trio album. Dear Biscuit, that's what I call Mary B. Let us celebrate our Dolly. Let us honor her for our shots and let us honor her for her unabashed large breastedness. Let us honor her for her stunning performance in one of the most delightful feminist movies of the 1980s nine to five, that I saw with my parents and sister at the Tannis Bourne Drive-In. And let us honor her for all her hairdos, and let us honor her for her possibly non-existent husband, and let us honor her for Dollywood, because, because, and let us honor her for her masterful <laughs> songs an athletic voice, and let us honor her for her album Trio with Linda Ronstadt and Emmylou Harris, the true soundtrack of my childhood mornings, and let us honor her for her white sequined pantsuits, and let us honor her most importantly because she seems like a truly funny, decent, empathic, intelligent, kind person who the opposite of sucks. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, we pray this. Dolly, wildflowers don't care where they grow. And I wrote this little poem in my head on the way to work walking a couple of years ago, um, and I'm going to read it to you now. Walking to work in the morning. My one mind says, you look like, a, like you're wearing a sausage casing in that skirt and shirt. <laughs> then my other mind says, you look great. Then my other mind says, you're a really nice person. You don't even kill bugs. <laughs> then. My other mind says, fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> Thanks, you guys.
Thank you, Zani. That was excellent. Excellent. Okay, and our third reader tonight um, is Kathy Cat Johnson, um, born and raised in Colorado, but has lived in all four corners of the U.S. Twelve years after getting a B.A. in English, she returned to school to study nursing. She's a retired RN who has also been an EMT and an elementary school teacher. After the death of her husband in 2016, she followed her daughter Shannon to Willow County. She credits Fish Trap with reawakening her lifelong love of writing. So, where are you, Kathy? Oh, you're over here. And yes, welcome, Kathy. And I'm going to say publicly and on the internet, thank you for having such a cool daughter. It's wonderful to be old. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I was inspired to write this short lyric essay at Summer Fish Trap last year. In the 1980s, the late 80s and early 90s, I had the unique experience of working as director of nursing at a psychiatric long-term care facility. The six men described in this piece were all too real. They are snapshots of just a few of the World War II veterans that were entrusted to our care. This is dedicated to them. The unit. Old soldiers never die, they just fade away. General Douglas MacArthur, April 1951. Schizophrenia is manifested by characteristic disturbances of language, communication, thought, perception, affect, and behavior, lasting longer than six months. The American Psychiatric Association. What poor bastard do we have to poison today? E.R. Tallman, MD, circa 1987. <clears throat> Here, old soldiers pace the stark white walls by day with storm clouds trapped in their eyes. Richard parades around regally in, in the shabby chenille bathrobe he believes is a silk brocade dressing gown. I'm brown, melting wax, he solemnly proclaims. He carries a thick, tattered notebook that holds his compositions, intricate spiraling lines of tiny symbols and ten-digit numbers interspersed with the occasional letters to the Pope and the President. His blackened fingernails are spades that dig without success for buried treasure in the fence, by the fence in the yard. He settles for Monopoly money. Calvin is a bedraggled six-foot-tall Cupid doll who shuffles the halls in floppy house slippers and denim overalls. Kelly, the psych nurse, calls him baby boy. He rewards her with a silent, toothless grin. In the glow of the fluorescent light, lobotomy scars are visible under the dark bristles of his buzz-cut hair. His gait is slow, but his grasp is quick as he grasps loose, loose objects that catch his eye and stealthily stuffs them in the bib of his overalls. Farrell dresses in fresh khakis to prowl the Arden forest in the resource, recesses of his mind. Sensing death, he raises his arms to sweep his rifle, right to left, left to right, <coughs> he cries as he spews an imaginary barrage of bullets until, all round spent, he drops his arms and asks, Got any candy, honey? Walter prefers to sit quietly in his room where he changes his shirt in anticipation of a visit from his old buddy Ralph. He and Ralph once poured the concrete to build the moon. 
pretty lady. If you drink just a little nail polish remover every day, you could have nice big boobies, he tells Helen, the evening nurse. Alex is wraith-like in the baggy flannel shirt that drapes his scrawny frame. He has a wisp of scraggly white hair, steely blue eyes, and a bulbous nose tattooed with purple spider veins. He creeps up behind Jay, the day nurse, as she sits at the desk to chart. Ever so slowly, he strokes her shoulders. Then, with a flash, forms a fist and soundly thumps the top of her head. Wordlessly, he pivots and floats away, arms held rigid and straight at his sides, fingers flapping rhythmically like fish stranded on a riverbank. Victor blocks my office door with granite-like bulk that eliminates any chance of escape. You American or you German, he demands. Without waiting for a response, he execute a, executes a clumsy about face and lumbers away in search of a red elixir to replace his lost blood. Maybe some strawberry Kool-Aid or Hawaiian punch. Red vine licorice will do in a pinch. Once satisfied with his makeshift transfusion, he presses his brow to the TV screen in the lounge and communicates wordlessly with the spirits who dwell there. As day slips into evening, a ceasefire of sorts descends on the ward. Harsh lights are dimmed, locks are secured, the medication cart squeaks and rattles its slow, steady progress from one end of the hall to the other, dispensing magic pills and potions meant to summon sleep and hold nightmares at bay. The weary soldiers begin to settle for the night. Richard summons magical powers to levitate from his chair to his bed when no one is watching. Calvin secures his pilfered treasures under the boxer shorts in the third drawer of his nightstand so no one can see them. Farrell gets an extra foil-wrapped Hershey's Kiss to sweeten his dreams. Walter pulls his comforter up to his chin and waits in the faint light of the moon for Ralph to appear. Alex waits till the nurse leaves to spit his pill-laced applesauce into the trash can and fish flop out of his bed onto the floor by the wall. Victor unplugs the TV. Joe, the night nurse, once said, I read an article that theorizes that schizophrenics are the ones who have the true grasp of reality. It's the rest of us who consider ourselves normal that are actually crazy. Eye rolls, whispers. Joe needs some time off. <laughs> Yet, I can't help but wonder Decades have passed since the tired old soldiers of the unit have ceased their combat with the ghosts of a war they did not declare. True to their mission, they have faded away. And I wonder, how many new soldiers from how many new wars have been drafted to take their place? How many ex-soldiers with no safe ward for shelter hang out in bars, sleep in alleyways, die alone. Still, those in power with no personal blood stake in the matter endlessly start more wars. So, I wonder, who exactly is it that's really crazy? Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. That was uh, that was really good. <laughs> um, we're going to take a little intermission, and we're going to be back with the music half of the Women, Words, and Music. 
And feel free to help yourself to um, food in the back and something to drink and make a bid on the, um, the poster over there. And um, let me, I guess I should make these announcements now before I forget. Um, coming up here at Fish Trap, um, Mike, you might want to throw some things in if I miss anything, but <laughs> um, Fish Trap Fireside coming right up next Friday with Ingrid Cook, Kendrick Moholt, and Cameron Scott. So that's the season finale, right? Wow, time flies. And I want to remind everyone um, that youth scholarships for Summer Fish Trap open, are open now um, through May, so or until May, May 1st, I think. Yeah, so if you know a kid who loves to write, um, check it out, fishtrap.org, and um, get them signed up. Um, for the Music Alliance, we have Toonsmith Night coming up on April 8th, um, the night after Fireside. Imagine that, featuring Carolyn Lockhart, Midlow, and Janice Carper. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's going to be fun. <laughs> And then we have on uh, we have our 11th annual Hoot and Annie and Shoe Fly Pie Social on Sunday, May 21st at the Odd Fellows Hall. And I, <laughs> I don't know what you're telling me, Jennifer. Pies. <laughs> oh, pies. Yes. If anybody, wants to make pie. if anybody wants to make a pie, talk to Carolyn. Um, or you can you can go to our website and email through the website or whatever. But we are. Um, always amazed at how many delicious, beautiful pies that we get um, uh, for that event. And we're putting together the, the showcase of music now, and it's really exciting, it's fun. Our theme is um, Happy Trails, so um, that'll be fun. And then we also have, of course, Fiddle Camp coming in July down at the Willow School. We have the Courthouse Concerts coming in June. We just put uh, that uh, whole three months of music up on our website, which is wvmusicalliance.org, in case you don't know. And we also have on that website a calendar of every live music event that we know about. Um, you can check it out there, and we try to put things up as soon as we find out about them. So, um, uh, and coming up, let's see, um, currently, of course, at Josephi Center, celebrating women who tell our stories, the art exhibit uh, up through, uh, I believe it's April 17th. And then on April 22nd, the Wallowa Valley Youth Arts Fest uh, Festival opens, and that goes on, I'm not sure how long, but um, uh, that's the opening night is April 22nd. And as always, um, visit josephi.org for ongoing classes and other upcoming events and exhibits. Um, and if you've uh, never uh, visited the, uh, the library there, be sure and do that. Um, anyway, we want to thank Josephi Center, Music Alliance, Fish Trap for pitching in on this event. And um, thank you all for coming. Go get something to eat, and we're going to change the stage around and bring you some more music. So thank you so much. Everybody ready for round two? Okay. How about those brownies, huh? Man, did you taste the brownies? A couple of uh, other announcements. I mentioned the uh, um, Malawa Valley Youth Arts Festival um, opening on uh, the 22nd of April at Josephi Center. And for that opening, Amy, who is Amy Fairchild, who is playing piano, there she is still here, um, uh, is putting a music program together with uh, beginning violin students. Is that beginning correct? Beginning violin and beginning piano students, and I'm going to have a little children's choir as well. Yay, a children's, children's choir. choir. Great, yeah, a preview of, of what she's going to be teaching uh, at Wallow Fiddle Tunes Camp, uh, which is um, July. Uh, the same week as Summer Fish Trap, so we won't mention the dates. <laughs> no, it's 4th through the, uh, I mean, what is it? 9th through, through the 
15th, right, right. Um, and also, another quick safety announcement, the elk have crossed the highway at Eagleson. Oh. FYI, um, and they might still be crossing back and forth, so be careful when you go home. <laughs> right. Are there more in Malawi too? Oh, okay, all right, watch out out there. Okay, on with the show. Uh, first up on the music portion is my dear friend Heidi Muller. We go way back, um, decades and decades. <laughs> Heidi is a longtime songwriter who lives near Joseph. Her CDs are available at the Book Loft and the Sheep Shed. She and Bob Webb are going to be giving a concert tomorrow night at the Hurricane Creek Grange at 7 p.m. So that's a, it's been a while since we've had a Heidi and Bob concert. So please welcome Heidi Muller. I thought I'd get the plug in for tomorrow night. So, hope you can come. I made cookies. Okay? That should bring you out if the music doesn't, right? Grab a cookie and run. <laughs> well, this is a song that some of you have heard, and you might know enough of it to sing along, and that would be fun, wouldn't it? We have some singers out here. We can have some harmonies if you feel like it. dark lullaby and gathered them up in their arms. It's a good time to walk your worries away and sing to yourself a new tune. If the answer you needed didn't come through the day, stand by and keep an eye on the moon. Keep an eye on the It's the oldest 
grandmothers know it's wise to keep an eye on the moon keep an eye on the moon she'll light up your way she'll lean down and listen to what you have to say if you're wired and restless she'll tell you It's only a phase Keep an eye on the moon Keep an eye on the moon Thank you. Let's see. I didn't make a plan for this. Oh, okay. Now, I think we need to bring this down, okay? Is, oh, is that enough? Okay. Or do you need me to change? So I'm going to finger pick the dulcimer. This is a dulcimer. This is a baritone dulcimer. Sorry. It doesn't really work if I stand up with it. I mean, it could, but not not for me usually. Um, so uh, that was one I wrote. That's on the Up Hurricane Creek CD. We live up Hurricane Hurricane Creek. Is where we live. We live up behind the Grange, and we have a CD that sort of talks about that. But this one uh, is not recorded. This is one uh, that's. Pretty new. How do birds tell time when to leave the branch and take to the sky, circling up to climb? Swoop and dip, tail and tip, find some friends on the wing, draw them close in magnificent spirals, let the earth hear you sing, sing your joy and your will for survival. Destination 
That was beautiful. I haven't heard that last one before. Um, all right, next up we have Jennifer Hobbs. <laughs> um, Jennifer is a longtime musician who plays piano, flute, guitar, and dabbles at a bunch of other instruments. <laughs> Proudest of songs she wrote for A Christmas Carol and currently working on a new musical. This is the classic overachiever over here, I must say. <laughs> In the meantime, she works at Fish Trap and uh, hangs out with family and friends and animals. Um, please welcome Jennifer Hobbs. Does it work over here? I think so. Yeah. You tell me. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, and no, I think it's. So, um, going after Heidi, <laughs> uh, I'd already planned this, but um, there's just no way. So you're gonna sing for me. <clears throat> um, fun story about Janice and Heidi. Um, I actually heard them play um, a long, long time ago in Tacoma. Uh, and I found out after I met them here, after I moved here, that I had actually cassette tapes with them on it. Um, so they have been inspiring me for a long time. And my role in this, um, I just so you know, I performed the brownies, and I performed the banana bread, <laughs> um, and I performed the window. So um, um, I am doing that thing where in between glorious, accomplished musicians with CDs, I'm the person who makes you think, you know, I could get up there and do better than <laughs> um, I mean, she said she was a musician, but really, I think I, I'm going to sign up for that next time. Um, so that's my role here tonight. Um, so I'm going to teach you your part, and then I'm going to do these kind of pauses and eyebrow raises when it's time for you to jump in, and, and you're going to be amazing. So, um, oh, and I wrote this song. I finished the song today, just like the brownies and the banana bread. <laughs> and Janice and I were talking about how shocking it is that some people wait to the last minute to do things. And I really feel like I can't understand that at all. So your part is, go down to the earth, lay your body down. Let's see if I can do this right. Go down to the earth, lay your body down. You come from the mountain, now flow back down. One more time here. Can we? There we go. Okay. And I'm going to use my glasses. Okay. Okay, one more time. And you can join in with me if you'd like. Go down to the earth, lay your body down. You come from the mountaintop, then flow back down. One more time. Go down to the earth, lay your body down. You come from the mountaintop, then flow back down. 
Very good. You're doing better than me. Here we go. River running by my feet defines this place I live. From ridgeline snow to wetland brush, web of life you give. Oozle dancing, mink slides by, heron in the shadow. Salmon rising, squirrels fly, windows in the meadow. Go down to the earth, lay your body down. You come from the mountain top, then flow back down. Okay. You guys are doing great. <laughs> I'm going to have to do further disclosure. I woke up this morning with a terrible migraine, and the whole room is sort of spinning on me. So that's why you're holding me up. OK. River running by my feet to find this place I live. From ridgeline snow to wetland brush, web of life you give oozel dancing mink slides by heron in the shadow salmon rising squirrels fly willows in the meadow go down to the earth lay your body down you come from the mountain top then flow back down Morel, moss bark, huckleberry, wild churning power, rugged flower, fragile, roaring still, refuge, wild flower, can slow this river flow, foaming through the boulders, life spills around and down, my mother on its shoulders, go down to the earth, Lay your body down. You come from the mountain top. Now flow back down. Lost steen, Wallawa, Grand Round Snake, Columbia Sea. Slipping from the snowpack high, replenishing ground, replenishing me. Woodland, desert, gorge, and grassland. Canyon full of thunder. Cloud boost, flash wood, forest fire, keep flowing under. Go down to the earth, lay your body down. You come from the mountain top, then flow back down. Go to the sea when clouds cover me. I'll come down with the rain. Down with you, river. Go down to the earth, lay your body down. You come from the mountain top, then flow back down. Down to the earth, lay your body down. You come from the mountain top, then flow. Back down. Go down. CDs for sale. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Y'all sound really pretty singing, and and that's a brave woman to to play a new song. I know what that feels like. Speaking to brave women. Here comes one now, because my partner in crime for Jezebel's mother. This is Carolyn Lockhart, and uh, I think that's what's going to be about Hi. right. And 
Okay, I'll just talk then while she's getting everything together. Um, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, how about this side? All right. That looks good. How does that look? That, how does that so look? Good? Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, Carolyn and I have been playing music together for about a decade or so, and uh, um, her influences were Etta James and uh, Abby, Lincoln. Uh, Abby Lincoln, and I grew up with <laughs> Patsy Cline and Linda Ronstadt and Bonnie Raitt. So shake it all up and yeah. put some salt on the rim, and here we go. See what sticks. <laughs> So this is a song that um, that I wrote a long time ago. Uh, it's not on cassette, though. <laughs> Just saying. Um, and uh, I wrote it. I, it's really hard for me to come up with lyrics. Janice is really good at it, and I just throw music at her and say, could you do the lyrics? Because I can't live with the ones that I'm coming up with. Anyway, that, that's another story. And um, anyway, I went, I went to a counseling session. This is when I lived in Corvallis. And uh, um, I come from a family, a lot of kids. My mom had eight kids. And um, it was just Lord of the Flies most of the time, <laughs> you know. And I always blame my older sister for being uh, fairly um, abusive. And my counselor, and I was blaming her a lot, and so my counselor one day, she just said, so where was your mother? And I was like, oh, whoa. You know, because you don't blame your mom for stuff. You know, you just, you just, we don't, we didn't. We just respected our mother. She was, you know, but she had a lot of problems. And um, anyway, she wasn't around a lot when, when we needed her. Anyway. So this is one of these stories. This is I went back to my car. I just sat there and I was like, "Oh my God, yeah, that's that's right, that's right." Where was my mom? So anyway, I just wrote it all out, like right there, and um, and this is <laughs> this is how it goes. <laughs> I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. Many are the secrets that mother her tears. She's all alone. She cries in no ears. She shows her face every once in a while. But the pain that's there is disguised by a smile. She may act like there's nothing wrong But she won't take it very long I'm telling you, my friends, it's true A girl gets weary He used her and abused her It was great big fun Kept her up late until the darkness had won. Where was the protection from these unwarranted ills? Lost in the fog of unfound love, booze, and pills. She may act like there's nothing wrong, but she won't take it very long. I Telling you, my friends, it's true. A girl gets weary. Yeah. A girl gets weary. Yeah, yeah. She gets up in the morning and she sits and stares, looking in the mirror, wondering who is there, who is there, yeah, yeah, who is there, yeah. Mm. She sits 
gets up straight, takes a breath Cause she's made up her mind She's gonna leave it Leave it all behind What will she do? She doesn't know She just can't stay here No, she's just got to go She may act like there's nothing wrong But she won't take it very long I'm telling you, my friends, it's true The girl gets weary Yeah, yeah A girl gets weary Yeah, yeah She gets weary without a song about the moon and I know Heidi already did the <laughs> ultimate moon song but I, I wrote one uh, actually with Shannon McNerney in mind who absolutely hates the month of February <laughs> and we were commiserating about that she said this time it wasn't quite as bad as it usually is but um, anyway um, <laughs> I was thinking about her when I came to the, the thinking of what the chorus to this song was and uh, so yeah, the February moon was... And Janice just wrote this. Yeah, well, like yeah. Hot off, press. hot off the press. It yeah. wasn't last night. Where's Janice? No, it wasn't, it wasn't that fresh. It's not that fresh. Yeah, yeah, no. I should have brought my shaker. One in a million, so they say. These are the odds it goes my way One in a million, so they say Oh, what I give for time to kill Here in this dark midwinter chill you 
<laughs> ah, too many buckets. Too many buckets. Um, uh, let's see. You should be on that side, I think, because she, she needs to be in the middle. And uh, this is Laura Scovlin. Laura Scovlin! And uh, yeah, we, uh, we were jamming at Janice's house after, um, I don't know what it was. What was it? <laughs> I don't know, Tuesday night or One something. of those Tuesday nights. Night, yeah. And uh, anyway, we did this tune, and um, Laura uh, had her banjo, and she played along with us, and harmonized with us, and we said, well, <laughs> that sounds really good. Would you please do this with us? So, um, And a little, uh, yeah, this is a song that Carolyn and I wrote together. Yep, one and, of those. Uh, yeah, Janice wrote the lyrics. Uh, yeah. and, and I just want to send this out to um, uh, a brave woman um, in my life. Um, my my sister Julie would uh, be um, 65 years old today, Aww. and we lost her 11 years ago to breast cancer. And she was a uh, just my childhood memories um, were part of the part of some of the inspiration for the lyrics in this song. So. Um, yeah. Here's to all the all the brave and beautiful women out there. Yeah. Sweet as the blossoms and the smile. 
Lois Goblin, Carolyn Lockhart, thank you so much for coming tonight. Enjoy some more food before you leave, and I think Jennifer might even play another little song on the piano for us as you're really, no, 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 oh well, maybe that's what to say. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. We'll see you at the next event. Um, have a great weekend, and watch out for those elk. <laughs>